Welcome back, everyone. First of all, thank you, Pali, again for the interview. And thank you to Alex and Cole bringing us through this very intense torment and synapse best of three. And we are now having the final match of today. And it's exactly the same. It is going to be stacked. It's going to be intense between Ariandel and Sinners here in the lower bracket with so much pressure on the shoulders of the players because who's losing right now will be out of the winter circuit and with me today very excited here veronica welcome in thank you thanks Zaya. i'm really excited to be here the stakes are very high tonight absolutely yeah if you drop the sets Today, you are going to leave the winter circuit and we do play both of the potentially deciding sets, the first and the second one, on the Rackers Yard. Now, that's a map that is usually coming with high pressure and high intensity because the players have not so much wiggle room to spread out and Doctor and Mastermind are both very, very mechanical killers where you need to be either on point with your shocks or you need to be on point with your dodge attacks how do you feel like is this going to impact this best of three we have ahead of us i think it will be quite tense i mean of course we have the basement there and shark and i think that uh, that may affect the gameplay quite a bit as you really don't want to end up there um so i think the survivors will really have to work hard on their positioning and i think it's probably going to be quite tense as you know, the killers try to pressure as much as they can, and the survivors try and make sure that they're dying in the right places and getting all the right generators done. Yeah, that's a good point to mention, right? The shack in in the middle of the wreckers yard, making a lot of plays impossible for the survivors. You cannot really use all the resources in the midsection because. If you really get it down unexpectedly, you are going to face uh, great repercussions on that. So you have to kind of pull yourself towards the outside. That kind of can affect body blocking as well because your teammates potentially have a longer way to run until they are reaching you. In the background, we are already loading in. I think this is something we can say to all teams today that they're really on point with preparing and the timing here. And we can tell that Ariandel and Sinners are going to be well prepared now. Important to mention for the finisher here is that Ariandel has high expectations on their shoulders because they are a little bit of the core from Elysium. Meanwhile, Sinners coming in from South America after a long time representing the whole community. And Veronica, the past two weekends, Sinners has constantly pulled great comebacks against difficult situations. Do you think they can overroll Ariandel with their mindset here? I really think that anything can happen. I'm really not, to be honest, I'm not looking in either direction. I think both teams have a chance, and I'm really excited to see how it plays out. This was very good staying <laughs> neutral and uh, and making sure that you don't <laughs> take any side there because I'm always very bad at picking a prediction side as well. And I totally agree. Both teams have the big chance here. And Exise wants to apply the pressure as early as possible, finds the first survivor on the outside on a relatively unsafe pallet, but somehow Sweet Child manages to drop the pallet and force the killer into breaking it. Exa is now going to find himself on the edge map tile here, deep in the corrupted area, so the other three survivors will take the chance and go on to the generators here, but we already have the first injury pretty early into the game. Yes, indeed, that injury did come quite early. It looks like Exa was able to find Sweet Child just very... Uh very quickly off spawn there we see um he's chasing uh bang around the uh villa here next to the bus i guess uh, sweet child will be hoping to make this chase last as long as possible of course um as their teammates are progressing the generators but there we have it the first sound i think exercise will be very happy with that um that's come along pretty quickly and possibly we have a pain resonance coming in as well yeah, first of all, congratulations to your first caster curse in DVD League, cutting down uh, the chase time a little bit of uh, Sweet Child here. Great first down for Exiles, exactly what you are looking for at the beginning of the best of three here. You do get a couple of shocks there with your power as well. Bucky, Gustavo, we Jason have been hit 
by the power multiple times already, potentially going into snapping out soon. We do have quite some pressure on the generator right next to us, and interesting enough, we do not see the pop goes the weasel here. Instead, we are saying pain rest will be enough. We are going with the agitation to pick the hooks and with the sloppy butcher, making it very painfully to go for the resets here. Gotta say though, so far, Exercise is not spreading the pressure as aggressive as you would expect him when he brings the sloppy butcher in. Yes, that, that, that's right. I'm, I'm not sure quite what we see the first generator popped. I'm not sure quite what his strategy is though. He does have two generators quite close by. I'm not sure if there's a... Possibly he's trying to defend a, a three gen here with the this generator next to the bus and the shack and the one um, in the corner there. So I, I think mainly, he, yeah, he's he's been camping Sweet Child into the second hook stage and we, as we see the second generator pop. So I think he seems to have be playing this corner of the map, um, as we see. And he is still kind of staying around here, trying to find the potentially rotating survivor. He does hit the Claudette, she's immediately leaving here, so Sin is really not taking any risk, rather sacrificing Sweet Child, but getting no injuries and taking the pressure into the generators here 60 percent on a generator further away from the hook 40 percent on the one exercise is trying to monitor here so sin is also not going to be too afraid of exercise here showing him very clearly well whenever you're moving a meter away we are going to rotate in progressing these generators and then we are well communicating and we are going to leave very early however though we are still on three generators even though there is progress on the other side of the map we are losing the first survivor really going according to the game plan of exercise here so i do feel like the killer even though he might feel some pressure is still pretty happy with this situation Yes, I think so. I mean, we, we do see the fire generator pop there, but I think um, it, it's a very good situation for Exile to already have a 3v1 at this point in the game. Um, we see he is chasing Bucky down, and will he get the quick down on him? I think there's not... He's on the filler here. Um, I think it looks like, yeah, he, he has got that down very quickly, which is great for Exercise. And I think another pain res will be coming in, but we do see the fourth generator pop already, and the fifth one is, is nearly done. So I'm not sure whether. Okay, there, there we are. Uh, the pain resonance did hit that last generator. But that's great progress. Yeah, I was a little bit worried for our killer if he gets that in time, but luckily he did. And now he does gain a few seconds here. I'm not sure if he underestimates the pressure that is on the generator far away or if he kind of accepts that the pressure of sinners is so high that he rather looks for a survivor that hasn't accumulated any further hook stages yet such as gustavo or we jason here he does find one of the survivors i just mentioned gustavo is a fresh hook would be three additional stages in the end game and the end game is relatively soon here as sinners is constantly progressing that final generator we will take a hit here going to drop the pallet though to gain a little bit of additional distance and going to hit Exercise with that wood. Exercise is rotating back towards the generator, is confident that he can defend it, and so far it seems like he will get away with that. Pain rest here has made a huge deal for our survivors, and Gustavo being found once again after taking some distance. We do have a team member around that is going to be Bucky facing the injured effect now as well, but both now afflicted by Sloppy Butcher as well, so any reset towards the endgame will take tremendously longer. Is rotating back towards the generators. Gotta say, he finds the perfect balance right now between gen control and committing to the survivors. Yes, this is some really nice gameplay. I was worried that they might uh, pop that generator, but I think they opted to reset instead um, and play it a bit slower. But it looks like it hasn't quite worked out in their favor as all three survivors are injured now. And Exiles is, as you say, are pressuring the survivors and the generator very well. Uh, we see Wee Jackson here being being chased using life, kind of trying to get away, I think. Yeah, and we see Exiles is not going to commit to that. He needs to keep checking on that generator. Now the table seems to turn slowly. Three injured survivors with Sloppy Butcher unable to go for a quick reset here. Great ones onto, back, uh, onto Jason here. 
making it impossible for him to drop the pallet. Maybe now, but he has to take a little bit longer. And that's going to end in a down. And see how crazy this is. We need to take a short moment to appreciate Exai's gameplay here. What he's showing us onto the killer side. We had one generator on 90%. Then, yes, came the pain rest. But we were worried again that the final generator is going to pop, but he's, man uh, he's managing to keep this final generator under control for three hook stages already. There's going to be the next injured survivor that needs to be very careful here. Uh, will be interesting if Gustavo and Bucky are going for a full reset here, but considering you have this copy butcher, they might just try to smash through the final generator. We can only hope that they're not taking too much risk here. Yes, um, it, as you mentioned, it's really incredible how fast things kind of turned around. That generator was so um, close to popping, and yet it's taken so long now. I think the, they're trying to pressure both the uh, rescue and the generator, as we see, um, which is really nice gameplay for them. But I think Excise has shown a really nice use of his, his power as well. And we, we see that um, the Bucky there is kind of... I th running a, quite far away from the hook, but Exide, I mean, he is aware of him. Um, I'm not quite sure what, what, what they're playing for here, if they're hoping they can they can get that save, but it's not going to come in before the second before the second stage. Looks like Exide is actually committing to Gustavo here, um, which is interesting, hoping that he can get him, um, and catch him on this relatively unsafe pallet, and we see the unhook has happened and the down has happened uh, very quickly. Yeah, something in my stomach doesn't feel right, and it's certainly not the dinner I had earlier. This is going to be the fact that the final generator hasn't popped yet, because we were so close to it. 90%, then comes the pain risk, but we were down to 70%, and we saw that Axize was not going to these two furthest generators. He was lurking around the shack zone for a while, tried to outsource the uh, survivors here. So he did underestimate the value. Now, I don't know that if Sinus was scared that Exiles could go for a quick rotation and therefore pulling away from the generator instead of finishing it. But considering what we have seen and the great pressure, it feels really, really wrong that the final generator has not been completed yet. And I feel like as long as this trial takes that this was the one and only chance Exiles would provide to Team Sinis here and that it's now kind of running against the clock here. Very nice read onto the locker there. Luckily Bucky can just jump out in time, outplaying our killer a little bit on the edge map tile here and he has to rotate back towards the shack because the pressure is otherwise getting too high just coming back. Uh, in time here, around about 75% on this final generator. Fourth piston is not pumping just yet. Exiles with great decision making so far. Perfect balance between generator defense and commitment onto the survivors here. And as I mentioned, I feel like Sinners had a good chance. And now where they missed it, they really start to struggle. Yeah, Sinners, they were just so close there with, with that generator that it is, as you say, it, it's quite strange to see now that they're, they're just not quite able to uh, to get back to that same pressure they had. I mean, we see there uh, Bucky is working on that generator, but Exize is, of course, rotating into him. I think um, Exize obviously is focusing on pressuring these generators, but he is hoping to catch someone out of position, and I think he, he just has uh, caught... Bucky out of position here who will be going down in the edge map but XI is opting to slug him to make sure that the survivors do not pop this last generator in the shack which they are stacking but can he make it in on time? That's the big question here. Is he going to make that? And the answer is no, he cannot, even though he is using the shock. But Jason is paying a high price for that. Will go down onto the ground here. And that is leaving Gustavo as the final standing survivor. Now, even if Gustavo goes down and we do face a 4k, at least the win condition for Team Ariandel in the upcoming game will be an escape through the door here. So you still have the chance as a killer to pull something last second in the end game play around the three gen setup and make sure that in worst case you can even go on the tie but with an end game clutch here and repeat it with the doctor on the rackers yard so pushing it through all the generators and forcing the survivor team in the upcoming trial to take an escape 
is always really important. But yeah, I feel like Sinners could have achieved a little bit more. They will definitely need to use the break to get that out of their mind as well. So making sure that they are going to be happy with what they have achieved right here. Exiles is going to try catch up onto Gustavo, just breaking these pallets here. And Gustavo, we have to say that, going on a quite impressive 1v1 one -one run here. Yeah, it's quite a nice chase here in the end game from Gustavo. I mean, of course, there's there's no hope. He he, he, can't, he cannot escape, but you know he he's just been uh, having having a good run. <laughs> well, he can, and, and now we have it. Uh, all four survivors are down. Quite frustrating for sinners, but as you say, I think they need to take this time just to get that out the system. They fought really hard to get this. Um, 4K um, with all five generators popped, giving the killer a much better and easier win con. Absolutely, yeah. Gustavo, Jason, and Bucky here with a great run towards the end game. Five generators have been achieved, putting at least a win condition up that Ariandel's survivors have to go for an escape here. We are collecting our meat pieces from the map. This is always the downside when you went on a little bit of a slugging here. But Axa is definitely uh, congratulations. We have to say that though. Very, very strong killer performance can be very proud. I don't want to say no surprise because Axa's is so known because then I always feel like we don't value the killer performance enough. But um, he definitely lived up to his name and the, all the experience that comes up when you hear the name Axis uh, really has uh, the reason here. Interesting to see would be if Bucky, uh, Bucky has already been hooked once, so uh, potential bleed out won't make any difference here. Just as a quick rule excourse for everyone who's interested, if a survivor is bleeding out that has never been hooked before, then we give out the three hook stages, but not the fresh hook for the third win condition. But if the survivor has been hooked before, then obviously the individual hook stage for win condition three has been gained and then the survivor can just bleed out and it won't get uh, get into any punishment for the killer so especially who's who didn't watch dbdl since last year the punishment for a bleed out is way way reduced compared to it uh veronica maybe as a question to you while we are vibing with bucky in this corner right behind um, the coffee machine or whatever it is um <laughs> On the side of uh, Sinners now, preparing on the killer side, you need to catch all the Ariandel survivors, not a single escape possible. And your perks are locked in. This is important to mention. Will you try something crazy, something risky, like spreading slugs from the beginning? Or will you play just as normal and see if you can catch up to them? That is a very good question, Dai, and of course I uh, I do not have the answer, but personally, I think, I think I'd go for it. I think I'd try something a bit different, a bit take them by surprise, you know, actually do something unexpected, as that can often work in your favor when you do uh, take them by surprise and go off, uh, kind of divert from what they are expecting. I mean, I really don't want to overhype it, but Sinus has shown so many amazing turnarounds in the past two weeks that I wouldn't even be surprised. It was always on the survivor side, but uh, maybe they have surprises like this on the killer side as well, and they just never showed it. And now in the second half of the winter circuit, they're like, okay, let's swap it. Now it's time for our killer to make a big turn. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for the... Uh, rematch between Ariandel and Sinis on the Doctor on the Rikers Yard. We'll see you in a moment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Sinners vs. Ariandel with We Doctor here on the Doctor. I'm oh, sorry, Wee Jackson here on the Doctor on Rikers Yard again. Um, you see, he's going quite aggressively in into the map, already finding the first survivor kind of. Uh, in the uh, near the open generators, um, the chase is being cha taken here on the truck. I'm not sure if he's going to actually commit yet. Yeah, he it looks like he is committing here to Bob Observer, uh, already breaking that first pallet out of the way, taking the chase here on the, the CNL tie on. It looks like Bob Observer may have made a little bit of a mistake as he gets hit, um, taking the chase into the corrupt zone. Of course, we Jackson. We Jason hoping to get the first down here uh, very soon. First down hopefully coming in as Jason has a lot of pressure here. He cannot allow any escape. 
And then we would only meet the tie condition, resetting it and playing the doctor set again. Therefore, better getting it in here. We do see an interesting choice, Hex Ruin coming in clutch. But for that, you really want to push the survivors off the active generators. And so far, we are chasing Mr. Bobozavre deep in the corrupted area that is now coming to an end as we do get the first down. But on the other hand, the first objective has already been completed. So Ariandel here not losing any time. We do carry him deeper into the Rackers Yard edge, though, to make it a little bit harder for the survivors to go towards this unhook and potentially injuring any teammate that is going to come for a rescue. Not the worst region setup around the hook, not the best one as well as one generator is really pulled towards that shack. Lori waiting here, running away as we do see the blast coming in. We'll still get hit here. Now Jason aware of the location of two survivors. Meanwhile, Bubazavre uh, chilling on the hook here, but I feel like we need more pressure because if we would just go on to Camping Bubble, we will not have Hex Ruin coming in clutch here. Therefore, very understandable that the next target is hard work. Yes, quite right. Um, I think, oh, th there we see the second generator popping already. I think Ariando is showing some great uh, pressure on the generators. We see they are going in for the save, but I think, yeah, it looks like they decided not, uh, I decided not to go in for it as it would have been a trade. I guess he decided it's not worth it. Um, yeah, it, it is hard when you're hooked right there in the in the corner or in the edge of Wrecker's Yard. It is quite hard to get to, and it looks like uh, Wee Jason is decided deciding to pressure now this hook uh, until he gets to the second stage, which he has, and now he will probably go back to the generators to try and uh, get some ruin value. Now going to rotate back towards our lorry here. She has been the target before, but still healthy. Needs to find a down and an injury here. Babo is still hanging on to the hook there. I doubt that they will sacrifice him, especially with Hardcore calling out that he is in chase. Therefore, one survivor going to circle around to catch Babo and the other one staying onto the generators. Quick shock there towards the Hex Ruin to prevent any survivor from cleansing it, but this also means that the survivor team is now aware of Hex Ruin's location. So if it ever gets tricky with the Hex Ruin, they now know where they have to go for. Glad dropping the pallet quite early, but this was maybe a little bit too optimistic. That's going to be a quick down onto Babo Lori, unfortunately not able to take it down as well. Therefore, quick elimination as well. Feels like the previous game, so we are kind of on track. Yes, uh, the elimination has come in at three generators remaining, which is what happened in the last match. But then we did have that. We did have that third generator pop, and the same thing is happening again. Kind of, we, we are seeing. Uh, I'm having a bit of deja vu. Um, we see Hardwell is being chased around the shack, which is not a great place to go down. As we mentioned, he does not want to end up in that uh, basement, but uh, 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 Lee Jason is not committing to the chase here. And I think he's going to go and check on those generators. A little bit of checking by Jason, and while going back towards the generators, I thought he's going to target Hartwell again, but realizes that Hartwell is not going towards the location he really wants him in. We are kind of on this broken truck here, far away from the beautiful 3-gen. This gen down there, you can completely give up on, because this one is nothing you can defend here realistically. You would need to go way out of your way to defend that generator. Therefore, we're going to try working with the generator setup we have here and i feel like this shock came in last second as arima was ready to complete this generator down here at the fun bus now jason needs to be careful that no one is sneaking in into the back and secretly completing this generator but so far it doesn't seem like anyone is going to do that as excise is going to find the reset in the distance therefore the survivors are a little bit busy right now holding w here away making sure that as much time as possible is wasted but arima is finding nothing else than the comp corner will be interesting if they get the fun bus done though yes it will be indeed i think um i believe that he still has a pain resonance on on, on arima but i don't i don't think that that was used there was it um so i i see uh we see lori here is kind of the top of the map so i'm not sure what, what kind of pressure they have on that generator and i think i'm not was that yeah that that lori has just been found so yeah it looks like the the Pressure on those generators is not quite where you need where you need it really. Um, 
I think perhaps the the chase is uh, was that was that exercise I just saw? I'm not quite sure myself, but I think that this is a difficult situation uh, for we Jason because the hook is so far away from his three gen, so he's kind of going back and forth, not really able to commit anywhere. Yeah, Jason is trying the impossible here, spreading the pressure of hooks and gens across the entirety of the Rekka's yard and there comes the punishment. We really beautifully saw it here. The hook is on the east side, the chase is on the northern side and the generator is trying to defend this all the way southwest. This Jason is not going to work and he paid the price for that exercise, has completed that generator. However, Arima is going into second stage as they were sacrificing one stage for the generator here. Jason wants to rotate back to prevent the unhook but will come too late here. I feel like that Jason has a lot of ideas of what he has to do in terms of defending the gen, defending the hook, going back to the hook, denying the unhook, but I feel like he has so many ideas that he doesn't pick one singular game plan out and commits to it. Instead, he's trying to defend all possible solutions and all possible options he has, and by doing so, he's losing it entirely. Yes, I think you're quite right. I was a bit confused there earlier trying to figure out what his plan was. I see him looking here, going there, going back to the hook, going to the generator. And I was, yeah, I, I think you're quite right there. He he had a lot on his mind, but um, Ariandel have broken the three gen. It, but they are down to a, a 2v1 now at one generator remaining. So it's, it's, it's looking a bit tough really for, for, for them as well there's not really much pressure here on the generators but they are very uh, very well spread apart so will they be able to pull this off yeah i think a further spread of generators has never been defended before in the history of Rackers yard games but uh, lori has been caught out in a difficult position she is injured and with sa to russia that's going to be a hit into the back there's nothing that hardball can do the question is now will the final generator get done do we have to replay it on the doctor on the Rackers yard will sinners finish it right here in this case they will take the win or will we see an out or any last second um, move here by Team Ariando? That's the options right now. Hartwell is going to be picked up because what you have downed, you really want to take the hook stages from that to make sure that you're progressing towards your win condition. Hook stage number seven, it's going to be, and Exize still hiding there. He was hiding in the open. Needs to be careful, though, with the static blast on the Doctor. Didn't quite see if there's anything that comes with. No, there's not. So he might want to consider going into a lock or something because being found like this might end this best of three relatively quickly and there we are sinners once again with an absolute unexpected turnaround yes i think it has uh, played out a bit like 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 we said perhaps i mean we did looks like we didn't really understand what we jason's plan was here but it seems to have worked out really well for him actually um as it looks like this is going to be a 4k one i mean i i don't want to speak too soon but realistically there's not really much that uh excise can do here i don't think he can really uh, make make the hatch or anything like that so sure, that's going to be excise on the final run here nice fake attempt there by using the pallet but that's going to be it excise on the ground heart will on the hook no deliverance and here we are ladies and gentlemen if you still do not have sinners on your list of dangerous teams in the winter circuit because you underestimate them well then it's time to write sinners on their right now because they are playing against kind of the core roster of eternal against very known and strong players they haven't been in dvd league for almost two years because we didn't host for south america and here they are exactly what veronica and me talked about in the campfire chat they are able to make some surprises here and they are coming out now they are going to ride a wave of um, motivation ariandel will stay on the survivor side on the same map just a different killer do you think what what do you think is the most important task now for the survivors of Ariandel in their four minutes break? I think they're, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna 
we need to get over this, you know, this this didn't play out how they wanted to. Uh, they they broke this three gen, but yeah, they weren't able to I'm um, to then do the final gen. So I think, you know, they're really gonna have to play for some escapes. That sounds like a good strategy for the team. Let's see if they can execute the game plan on the survivor set all the way into the end game. We will find out, ladies and gentlemen, after a short break. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Wesker set, and we are, surprise, on the Rackers Yard. We are just exchanging the killer, and everything else stays the same. Let's see how they are going to play this rematch on the Rackers Yard. That's going to be quick chase for Babu once again. Uh, Veronica, you used the wording, we have a deja vu. I have one very much right now because it's the exact same killer with the same survivor in the first chase. Let's see who's staying alive longer. Yes, we will have to see. And we, we, we do have that uh, Babu Zava getting thrown there. Um, taking the, the chase here in, into the top of the map, kind of the, the top edge, but he is on this uh, kind of relatively unsafe field. It looks like he is able to rotate, but I don't think he can get very far. And there we have it, the first down already. Um, I, I see the, the killer is does have this uh, pain res, so I'm sure he will be hoping to uh, stop the first generator from popping with this uh, first hook. Now we're going to see it in time, that's for sure. Pain is going to come in clutch. This time we do see a pop goes the weasel actually. So um, Sin is now coming in with a little bit of a different strategy, not going to use the Hex Ruin anymore. Maybe because they realized last game that the pressure across the individual survivors on the generators won't work since Ariandel is so efficient and so strong here because Keep in mind, we do have to lock the survivor and the killer perks, but only before each individual set. So they can take the experience they made out of the doctor set and put it into their builds for the mastermind. And I wonder if the switch from the ruin towards the pop goes the weasel actually happened because he realized that Ariandel is a little bit too strong on being efficient on the generators and not allowing the spread pressure will be something um, we might have to find out later by asking them directly but we do see a couple of generators being progressed here 75 percent and two times 50 percent which uh, makes me very feeling very optimistic about uh, this camping being punished successfully Yes, uh, we see we Jason was camping but was over there into the second hook state, but he has left now and he is going to go back to his generators. Um, but I don't, he's not quite committing there, a bit, a bit unsure there, making sure no one's getting the unhook, but that is uh, giving the survivors more time to keep pressuring them. He has found Arima here uh, with that highly progress generator. I think he probably used his uh, pop on that. Uh, and he's going back to the hook. And we see the first generator pop, so so yeah, a lot a lot of things going on. And I feel like Ariandel has also learned a little bit from the previous trial because they are really expecting Jason to go for this camp here. They are not even pulling any attempt. They are very... Oh, actually, I spoke too soon. They are going to come in. Exa is going to be smashed into the wall. But now I do feel like he's going to make that. Not entirely sure if body blocking wasn't the better option there because by going for the smash into the wall, he allowed Exa to struggle free from the killer's grasp and go for the 1v1 and there's a for the people as well making sure that Jason will not even be left with a slug here Bubazavre with a wonderful dodge as well going on to run here onto this filler pallet will he be able to stay alive even with this high ping from South America to Russia he's able to read the killer correctly and going to vault in time unfortunately it's going to be a quick down and just like last time Hardball is coming too late Bubazavre is getting shit up by the teammate on top getting blind here it's uh, getting a little bit chaotic here hardwell was saying well if you get down well then better be on the hook as well but that was kind of impressive run here by ariandel going for the last second one for one then saving the slugged survivor with the for the people and then unfortunately didn't work but from the idea throwing someone in while completing the fourth generator ariandel definitely much more confident and much more on track than in the previous trial 
Yes, quite right. I mean, that, that was very chaotic there. They really got that save just at the last second, but we see the, the first uh, kill there at only one generator remaining, which is really good for Ariandel. We see X-Wise here is going to be hooked. So I'm not sure quite how much pressure they have on that final generator. Perhaps they're opting to reset instead, but this uh, looks like they, they can really come back from this. They really can, especially when they do not allow a quick second down right here. Arima is going for a reset. Hartwell is at least hiding properly, even though Jason is close by. 50-50, left or right. Jason decides to go back towards the midsection here. So Hartwell winning the hide and seek. Um, problem is that no one is working on the generator, so Axis is kind of progressing towards the second stage for free at the moment. The killer doesn't face any punishment for it. No generator is being progressed nothing else is being completed in terms of the objective so i do feel like access will just find himself camped into the second stage and then we can only hope that ariandel's survivors are hopping quickly onto the generators to get done their work because if they waste too much time then jason will actually profit here Yes, I think we, we see uh, uh, Jason here had a feeling that one of the survivors was in this area of the map and he, he has gone there to look for them and of course he found Hardwell but he is, he is not committing, instead he is checking on those generators. We see uh, this one is the one that Arima was working on but of course not, wasn't able to get much progress. I wonder if Hardwell will be uh, going for the save now. Um, yeah, there we have it. We have we have the save on X size, and I think this will take Wee Jason away into this corner of the map. Hopefully, uh, Arima is able to get some more progress, but he is already uh, on to Hardwell and already got that down. And we see the eruption coming in on that generator as well. Always kind of rude how the mastermind is interrupting the casting there with his voice lines, but <laughs> that's going to be uh, hook stage number six coming out now. Exile still going to stay injured, so we can tell that he's working on a generator. Arima being healthy, so he has a lot of time here as well. Let's see how they are going to play this out. Will Hart will be rescued immediately. Exile's very likely going to find a spray at least before he's going for a full reset, but even without being um, fully healthy, the hindered effect is very much uh, annoying there. And Arima, unfortunately, being located while being on the way towards the unhook. The live play is coming out, going to vault over the pallet. Jason expected that. Therefore, going to be on the survivor, and that's going to be a very difficult setup now. We do have the hooked survivor right next to it, the slug, and we worded one condition we said ariandel will be in a great spot if everything from now is going great and veronica this is the opposite of things going great yes this is really not what uh what ariandel would have been hoping for it looks like they're kind of ending up in a similar situation to the last game we can appreciate uh um, exercise being chased so i think we can appreciate that you know it, it is a bit difficult playing with the um Europe or Russia to um, South America ping perhaps that uh, caught them off guard a bit but yeah it looks like there's not really much that uh, Exiles can do he does get the save but you know still then they're, they're not realistically going to be able to pop that uh, last generator here Mastermind going to go for the next hook stage, making sure that the individual survivors are all hooked, not that, is that Arima it? is going to be down and welcome Hartwell, welcome to Jason's shack. <laughs> we are uh, congratulating you on making this quick. Ninth hook stage, I think he wasn't expecting that, therefore. Uh, we are going to finish it off very nicely here with the 4k and once and this time even stronger Sinners is growing um, over their own performance here last trial against Ariandel's survivor has been one generator remaining but now we have it even quicker and even more confident we do not even have a potential last generator being about to pop so we Jason uh, going for the same result but a little bit more confident at least that was on top 
the famous sherry on the top there means that Ariandel is now going to be under pressure. Their mastermind needs to play out of their mind. It needs to be stronger than everything we can potentially expect here. Veronica, my question to you again. As Ariandel's killer, how how do you feel right now going into this next trial with so much pressure? Yeah, so much pressure. I think, you know, it's going to be really tense. I mean, um, Ariando is really going to want to stay in this um, and, and play next weekend. But at this point, there's so much pressure. So I really hope that the killer is kind of able to, you know, remain uh, calm and collected and really play the best. Then let's find out, ladies and gentlemen, how good they are with dealing with the pressure on the killer side of Ariandel after the short break. Welcome back, everyone, to the Wreckers Yard with Ariandel versus Sinners. We have Bobo Zava here on the Mastermind. Looks like he's uh, found the first survivor here in the corrupt area of the map. We of course know it's a very difficult win condition, so he's really going to want to make this first chase as fast as possible, which of course is always uh, always the aim, but we have the first hit and he, he really needs to get this down, I think, uh, as soon as possible here. Like the chase is going kind of... Uh, towards the uh, open generator here. We, we have this pallet gem here. Uh, can, uh, can we see sweet chuck? There we, there we have a bit of a mind game there. The first down. I think this is, this is really good for Bubba Zava. A nice time. Absolutely. This is exactly what you're looking for. In the early game, making sure that the first hook stage is coming out. We do not even have 50% on the first generator yet. Gustavo, Jason and Bucky still busy spreading across the generators in the first place here. So um, that's going to be quite some time loss on the survivor side here. Bubble really being too fast for them. We also see a different approach on the killer perks here. We do have a brutal strength removing the pallets from the Rackless Guard even sooner and even faster, making sure that Rackless Guard slowly but steadily turning into an absolute dead zone here. Bulazavka just saying hello to the survivor, then pulling back, making sure that there's a little bit of pressure, short time loss on the survivor side. And we can tell that the pressure is high with the wind condition being a 4K on two remaining generators here because he does not secure any stages at all. He is straight going off towards the next chase. Yes, Bob Rosalva really needs to play this very aggressively to meet that win condition. And we see he is. He's, he's pressuring uh, survivors already, uh, even uh, chasing uh, Sweet Child again for the tunnel out. We see a wee bit of a... It's like a delayed hit, but he, we do get that... Um, uh, sorry. Borrowed time. Not borrowed time. I forget what it's called. But anyway, we get the endurance effect from the hook. But... It, it wasn't enough. He gets the down again very quickly. But we see the size of strike coming into play. This is not great for Bubba Zava. Um, you see he is in Shaq. So I'm not sure how how much more Sweet Child can do. But it looks like Bubba Zava deciding. I thought he was not going to commit. But he, he is committing here. Hoping to get this uh, down again very quickly. And we see a bit of a... Oh. I think he's going to get that down now. As we see the... Uh, Gosh, generates a pop. And that's going to be one exchange between one generator, two generators, and the second hook stage. So kind of the one-one principle here. We are going to award one hook stage to Bubble and in exchange one generator to Sinners. There's only one problem. If we do keep going through this uh, through this trial like that. Bubo is not going to meet the win condition at all as soon as it's way too fast here. What we need is a quick down, potentially a snuck, and then spreading the pressure. That is very, very needed here. Yeah, we see a very nice gen pressure from Sinners there. Already that um, that generator was very highly progressed. So this, this is a bit worrying for Bubo Zava. He really wa wants to stop that generator. And he is, uh, I don't think, yeah, he's not quite going to commit to the chase there on Gustavo. Instead, he, he's got really trying to pressure the hook and the generators, I think. And we, we see a bit of a, um, he's just, yeah, I mean, he, he's going to try block, body block this, I think, and sort of throw uh, Gustavo away there. We see, is there some, someone else was rotated him for the save? 
already a, a lot of things going on, but I wonder if that um, Bucky there is working on, on that generator we saw highly progressed. It was chasers being taken away from it. Now going to rotate around this very dangerous tile right here. It's a lot of mind gaming that's required. And Sweet Child is getting outplayed. There was not even a ping hit, I would argue. That was really Bobozavre making uh, the better read here on this tile and reading or anticipating that the survivor would rotate around you to catch the not. pallet. That's going to be third hook stage on the Sweet Child. Elimination coming through, but we need a 4K right now, right here to go for the win. One more gen would be a replay on the Rackers Yard if he gets the 4K on the gen remaining. And if Sinners is getting all the generators done, they would come out as the winner here. Unexpected winner, I would say, because a lot of people will favor Ariandel in this set. Veronica, it often sounds so easy when we say getting all the generators done. I feel like the three survivors against such a strong killer, as he just uh, proved once again, it can be very difficult. I think it is easier said than done. I mean, you can make plans, you can, you know, figure out we're gonna pressure these gens, these gens, but you don't know what, what the killer's gonna do. And, and the Bobozava is a very strong killer here. And we, we are seeing a great performance from him. So it is very difficult for, for, for these survivors. We see a, it's a bit of a strange, uh, I'm not sure what, what that was. That was a bit of a strange mind game there, but he does get the hit onto Gustavo, but I'm a bit, Right, he is going away from, from the generators here. Um, I think uh, Starbo, of course, hoping just to waste as much time as possible here on this on this just pile of junk, really. Um, <laughs> yeah, this we see, and actually, it does have a greeting that, that pallet there. Actually, quite a, a nice chase here, but that's just as I said it, it's over. Yeah, that was another cast curse there. You're, you're collecting them, but don't worry, it's going to happen. Uh, going to have happen way more often um, when going to comment over games. But Gustavo really, unfortunately, not able to stay longer. You mentioned it. He kinda was able to pull the killer far away from the generators. They were progressing here, so um, that was a really good move but unfortunately we do not see any outcome of it yet if we would at least get the fourth generator then sinners would be in a position where they can say well if everything is going wrong now at least we do not hand over the set point to Ariandel. At least we can go for a rematch here. But uh, Gudet also just holding W away from the hook. Not entirely sure if I agree with that decision making because now we will be in the exact same situation as before. But the fourth generator is completed. So even if everything is going downhill right now, we will have a tie and we will replay the mastermind on the Rackers Yacht. Yes, it looks like we are we are going to be back again on on the wreckers yard by by the looks of it. I mean, yeah, this is this is going to be a 4K one, so we're gonna we're gonna be back here again. A, a lot of games on the wreckers yard, um, very well played from both sides actually. Bobo Zava giving a great kind of performance, but the um, survivors from Sinner's side really keeping up that gen pressure as best as they can. A really uh, a really great match, I feel. Absolutely, and it shows how close these teams are together. None of them wants to take the loss here in the lower bracket. None of them wants to leave the winter circuit. So we are running it back, ladies and gentlemen. This time it's going to be Ariandel starting on Killer. So Bubuzavre very likely just going to stay there. Teams have a chance to switch their builds as long as they are locking them in once again. Uh, we will, yeah, in the background, we will prepare it. But we have to say, maybe for the statistic enjoyers, uh, 4K on one remaining generator is actually the yeah. most often happening win co uh, tie condition in DBD League. It's not 4K all gen stun, it's nothing else. It is always 4K one gen standing. But for a long time, it was always the ghost face on Larry's who always had a tie with 4K one gen remaining. This time it's going to be the mastermind on the Rackers Yard. Ladies and gentlemen, we will run it back in a moment. Before that, let's uh, say real quick, Veronica, I feel like this tiebreaker could go into favor of Ariandel because Bubazavra playing again, he can be proud of this performance and playing straight again will maybe work out for him. Yes, I think he can keep the momentum up and kind of, you know, um, 
seen now how uh, the survivors of Sinus play. Hopefully, can, he can use that to his advantage. But he has to, of course, not get jaded because he has been playing on this map for so long now. But I'm sure if he can just keep that up, it could go very well for him. And let's find out if that's going to work for Bubazavre. He's going to start on the needed tiebreaker. Rackers Yard Mastermind after a short break. <laughs> Welcome in everyone to the Mastermind on the Rackers Yard. I feel like we heard that before and you are right because we need a tiebreaker before a potential tiebreaker because they have the absolute same win conditions as they both got 4 k on one generator remaining here. Both teams were allowed to adjust killer and survivor builds as long as they are locking it in again. And we will see that we find different survivor perks on the side of Sinners. And we also have different killer perks on Bubazavre. Also a switch on the add-ons as well, making sure that we have a little bit of a more aggressive playstyle right here. We're catching Kate, I would say, as quick as in the previous trial working around the fun bus here a little bit of back and forth sweet child actually going to reach the pallet in time and bubble with this ping not going to joke around just holding w around the rock getting a very early down and i feel like this is exactly how the dead. other game of pubazavre started this is we are we are seeing a lot of repeats because i believe every game uh, we've seen sweet child be chased fast and we are seeing the hook come in now at five generators again, hoping to get that pain res again. So a lot, a lot of repeats here, but I think he will want to not repeat the, uh, the end result. Of course, hoping for a better win condition. Um, he's going to check on these uh, generators. I'm not quite sure how much pressure we, we, we have. We did see that with that pain res come in. Um, he has popped the gen and he is going back. And we see a generator about to pop but it looks like Boba Zava is in the area so I, he may be able to uh, prevent that from happening quite so quickly or oh, go back <laughs> he goes back to the hook we get that uh, endurance effect again and we see the first generator pop a lot going on at once absolutely but even a little bit of chaos I would say on the survivors side of team sinners here they are going to, for, first of all, they had a miscalculation there on the heel, and now they need to make sure that Kate is staying alive. Jason is coming in. He was playing the Mastermind before, did a very good and strong performance there. So uh, bringing in the necessary experience here to counter Babo, and they are playing this car here really, really well. Jason now getting grabbed, Kate immediately going to use this window of opportunity, but we see the hindered status effect. The survivor slowed down here because they are fully infected from the mastermind. So better finding a spray, but before that, they need to get into safety here. Will we see a third teammate coming in? That would be the interesting question right here. Dropping the pallet early, trying to stay as safe as possible, but Bubasavra ending it relatively quickly. Second hook stage for the second generator. We had that before as well. Not going to hook on to the basement here, as it seems like we want to go for the pain rest. Yeah, so I thought we might see some uh, basement hooks coming into play, but it looks like he, he is actually... Well, I'm not sure if, if, that, if that was actually a, a, a pain rest there, but it yeah. looks like he, he he wanted to hook in that area of the map anyway. Um, we see, I think, someone someone's spraying up there. Um, what? I'm not, I think he, he might he thinks someone must be in that area of the map. Because um, I don't really see a, another reason for going over there. Oh, and yeah, it looks like uh, Bucky was there and he has caught Bucky now. I think this would be a, a fresh hook for him. So he, he is going to uh, want to get this down very quickly. I'm not sure if he can actually commit. No, he, he is going back to the unhook. As we see the third generator pop. It was a very nice attempt there by Bucky faking the window and then going for the 360 there. Unfortunately, Mastermind coming out with a second dash right after and Babu then getting the injury eventually. They are on two generators and about to lose a team member. Nice. Therefore, Sweet Child coming in, but Bubu Zavre going to throw him away and that's going to be far away from the hook. 
And we can see Gustavo not even trying to run back as he realizes that this is not going to be enough time. Great hook defense by Babo here, throwing the survivor away to gain the necessary seconds to execute this first survivor here. Three versus one reset location being found as well. Luckily, Jason just in time, hugging tight around the corner here, making sure that he won't be grabbed going back towards the shack here that's going to be the dash over the window very good chase time so far especially when we consider that there are not so many resources left anymore but ultimately this run will come to an end we do see the survivors teaming up in the distance on one generator so potentially they are planning to get this one out of the way to spread the generator set up a little bit further but next hook stage already coming in bubble will hear the generator close by so potentially the next chase is coming out very soon. Yes, I think he he did get that killer instinct there, as we saw. So he is aware of at least uh, one of the one of the survivors, and it looks like uh, he he has, I think, become aware of Gustavo in the shack. He is. Uh, oh, yeah, actually, he he's going back to the unhook, hoping to tunnel out Wee Jason, who is going to the corner of the map. But even if he wastes a bit of time here, I I don't know if it will be enough to to get that. Uh, generator done and that fourth generator would be so so important because if you get four done well then at least we've seen it you can do something towards or you can do something with a three gen setup and then you can make sure that you achieve something but if you would go on this win condition if this would be the 4k right here then the survivor team is actually able to ignore any potential three gen setup in the upcoming trial there so Therefore, this would really not be what Sinners is looking for. They hopefully get that fourth generator out of the way. Unfortunately, when we are looking onto it, all these pain res hooks and all these consistent pressuring chases have been too much. We only have one generator on 50% so far. That doesn't look too good on the side of Sinners here, and we can only hope that they have a long chase now in the mid game somehow getting some wiggle room here but Bubuzavra also catching the unhooking survivor in a good timing therefore more injuries being spread yes this is pretty well played by Bubuzavra he is really keeping the pressure up and sinners are finding it really hard to to get that same result they got uh in the, in the last game for the 4k one we see they are i think deciding to to work on some different generators of course to split, split the pressure but Babo zava is gonna keep on pressuring them and but it is a 3v1 so potentially if uh if we have one good chase they they will be able to get some pretty nice pressure and finish the last generator and we do see Bucky here being chased on this power filler but it, it is unsafe but we see the life coming in but I think oh what 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 a nice uh, juke then we see that that fourth generator has popped this is really 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 great for centers yeah this is what we love to see a little bit of edge map juking getting a few necessary second onto the survivor team making sure that the fourth generator is coming out here now at least your killer has the chance to force them into a three gen setup and play around that we even saw that the final generator has something around the 50 percent mark here but it is unfortunately a pain rest once again so a little bit of progress and regression uh, coming in here onto these generators. Babo now with the tricky decision. Will you go all the way down towards the generator? We see they're only 10% so far on the fun bus or will you guard the hook stage? Babo is trying to find a little bit of a middle ground here, keeping a good eye on the gens and considering that this is somewhat of a defendable three gen, I feel like Babo is feeling quite confident right now, especially with catching Gustavo now. Yes, he, he did, I think, really get exactly what he wanted there. He managed to catch Gustavo, uh, kind of, you know, up. And we see a, a, a nice juke there from Gustavo, buying himself a lot of distance, able to get back into the tile. Um, not, not, not great for Bubba Zava, but he can probably uh, catch up pretty quickly. As this is the, the safest of tiles and th there we have it he does get the down as we see the other survivors have reset now 
Tja, that's going to be a tricky one for Sinners here. They found the reset. They are both healthy. Jason and Bucky can spread. They could potentially go on to generator aggression here because Gustavo has two minutes of hanging time. The only question is, will they be able to go on a little bit of a run? And will they be able to make sure that there's not going to be the constant pressure from Bobozavra onto the generators? They have pulled back though, and with that pop goes the weasel. This generator progress down here on the fundus is also going to be neglected and put down towards zero. We do see a quick heal. We will make it come in clutch there. Bucky going to move away as Bobozavra is coming in. I'm not sure if he located him there, but it doesn't seem like so. So far, the survivor is going to stay safe here on the side of Sinners. They can kind of restructure, discuss how they want to attack the generators and then go for it. And I feel like this short silence on the survivor side you can take to discuss a new game plan is really what Sinners needed in this moment. Yes, I agree. We, we do see, unfortunately, that, that killer instinct coming in. But, I mean, th this is a, a hard situation. Of course, they're going to try and get the killer away into this area of the map. But we saw that... Oh, and, and it looks like he has just found uh, someone else, in fact. So he knows that at least two of them have been in that side of the map. And as one of them, uh, Gustavo tries to cross into the generators. Um, Robert Zava chases him. This is, this is really difficult. We saw all the generators kind of pretty regressed from what I saw, they all went back down to pretty much zero, so this is going to be really, really hard for Sinners. You see uh, Bucky now being chased, so uh, Bobo Zava has really good control here of the map, he knows where all of the survivors are, he is just pressuring them away from the generators and he does have that pretty good 3 gen. Yeah, the pretty good 3 gen together with the perfect balance bubble finds here between committing to the survivors applying pressure and then rotating back and going for the defense. This is really what makes it so, so strong here. Great double dash here into Gustavo's back as well. It's going to be a quick injury and an instant spray though, but that's going to cost some time once again until Gustavo is ready to attack the generators again. Keep in mind, everyone, we have the new... <laughs> Uh, update so killers can kick generators only eight times after that there's not going to be any regression anymore and pain rest already counted towards these regression events so very soon bubble will not be able to go into any general regression anymore but he might finish it in time very nice patience being proven here once again going to let bucky vault multiple times and only when he's 100 percent sure to get the down then he's going to strike onto them really uh, showing off all his experience and all the patience here but they actually unexpectedly get it done two people and must have been working on the fun bus generator one of them is jason really really well done here breaking through that pressure from bubble zavre during i don't want to underestimate sinners here but i really felt like that came out of nowhere no, that took me entirely by surprise because when we last saw that generator, it had such little progress and we kind of, you know, we saw one person working on it, we've seen this hook going on, but, but yeah, as you say, they, they must have just stacked that. And I, I, was, I was really surprised that, what nice gameplay from Sinners there. Claudette like, being uh... thrown into the chest. <laughs> I would have laughed if they make an animation that if you throw the survivor into the chest, just getting closed and then the survivor is trapped in there. Come on, Bubble. A few additional blood points towards the end. Not going to happen. There's no blood hunt at the moment. He doesn't think it's necessary. But well done. That is such a good finisher here. That is going to be nine stages across um all four survivors though that is definitely going to be much much harder for the survivor side of ariandel now which we are going to see in the upcoming trial after the break welcome back everyone yet again for ariandel versus sinners on the wrecker's yard um we see we Jason here again on the, on the mastermind, and I've noticed he has a bit of a of an unlucky, a corrupt split there, with the two generators on one side and the other far off on the on the other side, but, which isn't great for him. He, you know, <laughs> this is a this is a bit unfortunate here. Um, we see, uh, it looks like he is uh, 
found someone or uh, looking for for someone stealthing. Yeah, we, I think I think he must have found the um, Hardwell here around the bus, who is taking the chase into the most corrupt area of the map. Now, actually, he he's on excise now, and a bit a bit uh, an unfortunate meeting there at the pallet. No one. Um, Exercise was not able to drop it. He is playing here on this pallet gym. Um, Jason hoping for the fast down, but Exercise is taking him further into this area of the map. But as this pallet is broken, does he have any other resources? And he looks like he, he's able to juke that uh, dash a bit, hoping to get to this last uh, pallet. I don't think he can quite make it there. And now we have the first down. Pretty, uh, I think Jason's going to be pretty happy, but those survivors are going to be keeping the pressure up, as we see. Very nice uh, progress on that one generator, but there is pain res. No, no pain res, so essentially they, they can finish this. Yeah, that might be painful. That pain rust hook was not available. Is it going to be enough? No, the answer is no. Babo Zavre is going to take an injury though, but the first generator is going to be completed and that's going to be a huge step for them. Was a little bit... Um was a little bit worried when Exiles took the first injury so early because especially when you are going to play a tiebreaker and potentially also going to be eliminated from the tournament you really want the first chase to go well and the first hit was very unlucky but then Exiles was going on quite a good run here ensuring that the first generator is going to come out therefore we just see a couple of pallets being broken and Jason sticking to his strategy in opposite to Babo camping way more aggressively ensuring the first elimination but I feel like that Ariandel is understanding that they already did that in the previous trial they are smashing the gens as a punishment so I really hope that Jason is also able to adjust a little bit and apply more pressure on them yeah we will have to see how it worked out I mean uh, we were a bit unsure on the start but but Jason's strategy has actually worked out quite well so far for, for, from from what we've seen uh, looks like the, the, yeah, this area of the map is pretty much a dead zone, so I think the survivors are you know, trying to get away if they want to make the chase start. Exercise uh, here being chased, we, we, we did see the FDP come into play, but he's already been injured, so I'm not sure quite how much longer he can last. He's going to drop the shack generator, but Jason is really hoping to get Exercise as we see the, the second generator pop. We have do have some, bit, some nice uh, fellow pallets here leading into the window. So potentially X-Ace can have uh, quite a nice run, but will it be enough to get another generator done? Hard performance in That's going to be a very short game for x -Ace, it seems like. But before we are going for the elimination, Jason is trying to <laughs> at least tackle this survivor here as well. Oh, that's going to be a rush on to Bubble, but that's going to be a very good and successful pallet drop. Quick, uh, minus 5% onto the generator right here and then we are going back on to Exercise who has made a little bit of distance at least being there onto this tile Jason making sure that no one can go onto the generator just yet and that would be it for Exercise I do feel like this should be the pain rest otherwise there's no reason to go that far away onto the outside of the map yeah that's going to be the pain rest here kicking in going for the regression. Pop goes the weasel in the back pocket as well in case the survivors are touching any additional objective here. Not caring about the generator in the back. Very understandable here because this generator setup we have on this uh, left side of the wreckers yard looks really beautiful to defend. Yeah, so it looks like he does have a nice setup here and he opted to just focus on this and use his pop on that uh, far away generator there because it is hard to get to so I think he was just hoping to aggress it as much as possible. Looks like he has found uh, Bubba Zava here on the shack but I'm not sure if he if he's going to commit. No, he opts to kick the generator and go back to his nice uh, setup here. I think even a potentially a slight forgen. Yeah, what's the perfect strategy now when you are with the back against the wall, when you're trying to get something done here? I mean, on the paper, we just have three stages in elimination so far, but 
unfortunately these three stages are just on one survivor therefore we already have the team cut down to three survivors which greatly reduces the generator pressure they can apply not going to deal with this pallet here is very understandable as well as it's very safe and once dropped you can only try to mind game around it therefore we're going back towards our somewhat forgen that we have established here on the right side we need to make sure though that the shack generator is constantly regressing because the survivors keep a good focus onto that Jason here not too hardly overstepping the 40 yard line but make oh actually now he's going to be confident that the reset has happened over here and might uh, catch Bobozaro off guard here who's just going to be with his team members and that's going to be a quick smash into the rock into the down there's the next survivor around as well so uh, we know that one survivor is not progressing the generators right now, therefore Jason has enough time to just go for the hook. That was really unfortunate there for Bubuzava, um, his reset being found. I think it was really important for Ariando uh, to reset in this situation because they really don't want to go down in the kind of 3-4 three, three, gen setup. We see Bobozava is on the hook. Rima is being chased, although Jason is not committing because he is really keeping that pressure up, really trying to go for the best uh, result he can. He is popping okay. that, that generator there. I think it's pretty much regressed down to nothing now. This is really hard for Ariandel. Yeah, I would love to hear the voice comes right now in Ariandel's VC. If they, what's the game plan? What's the new strategy? I mean, I like that they keep going for these resets, but Jason just doesn't allow it. We have seen it recently here on this rock group, how he was grabbing Bobozavre and downing him. Now we see him punishing Bobozavre and Arima. So every reset they take is already denied a couple of seconds afterwards and Hartwell is not getting any significant progress into these generators. If there would be a trade at least and you could say well they're doing the reset then they are wasting some time from Jason because he has to re-injure them and in the meanwhile they are getting the benefit of getting the generators done then I would say okay this really makes sense but unfortunately Hartwell is not able to go for a significant progress here and therefore we're just going to into the next chase here. I would doubt that Arima and Bubuzavra are resetting once again because at some point they will realize that Jason is just not giving them the necessary freedom for that. Yeah, Jason really is not. He has found every one of their resets. I mean, I think they kind of they wanted to reset pretty fast. They didn't go very far away, but it looks like Arima has just been reset as, as we see Hardwell being slugged. And it looks like they're trying to get a full reset off, but Jason, with his history of finding the resets, looks like he is a headed in their direction. Hartwell slugged for the ultimate pressure here. And there we are going to have the next one. That's going to be Arima in the comp corner, just left with one rock, will hold W and trying to make some distance and we are going to make a decision but we are going back as we see the scratch marks here and to prevent Bobozavre from catching Hartwell in time we are going back I do believe though oh actually not going to be too much recovery progress just yet as we have seen a little bit of crawling there as well therefore Hartwell will be thrown onto the hook here uh, as our killer decides to go a little bit further I would say that is going to be the next pain rest indeed more generator regression coming in and uh, now slowly but steady i feel like jason is making clear ariandel won't have a chance today yeah this is just really unfortunate for ariandel it looked like we had a pretty good start but now it's just not looking great it's really difficult to, to play in this situation we have hardwell on the hook we see, uh, we see, okay, um, Arima down by the generator, the last standing survivor, Bubba Azava. I don't know if he can make this even. Uh, he, he does make the save, but it's not really, not really much that Hardwell can do in this situation. An unexpected drop for Ariandel from the tournament for sure. In the first round, they were dropping against Synapse 
which was really unexpected. And then they were making a very confident run through the lower bracket and everyone was uh, saying, well, okay, it seems like the first round of the Winter Circuit didn't work out. Well, we all know that happens. Uh, sometimes things are just not going too well. But then we are going into this match here with Sinners and it does show that there are very strong teams at the moment and that the competitive scene cannot be seeded any longer between just two teams as like Elysium and Eternal a couple of months ago. We have a lot of uh, teams you might not have on the radar here. Uh, as we are um, enjoying how Jason is just going to finish it off here, not risking anything and therefore waiting until Arima is in the second stage. We can already congratulate um, Ariandel to a great performance though. It was great to watch you. Thank you so much for your participation in the Winter Circuit. And Sinners, congratulations for making just another turn and another step in the lower bracket here, representing the entire community and all our friends from the South American scene. So hyped to see you play and whenever you are showing up it seems like you are playing so confident and with so much enthusiasm we really love that and we are very hyped to see you in the upcoming week against night owls <laughs> then we have a lot of things to go through and i will just use um the the death of arima to start off first of all though I would like to say thank you to Veronica, my wonderful co-caster for today. Veronica, it was very exciting, very fun. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you, Daya. I'm, I'm really happy. Uh, I'm really happy to. Uh, I was here tonight, and I think, uh, as you said, it's lovely. It's really lovely to see this great performance from Sinners. I think a lot of people might have thought it was unexpected, but as we see, we really cannot underestimate them. And I think they haven't played in a while. Of course, the South America wasn't allowed, but that doesn't mean that they haven't, of course, been been practicing and getting stronger. And we we see a really great performance from them. And yeah, this has been some <laughs> really tense matches, but always a pleasure.